How do you test new Facebook ad creatives? What is the optimal way to set up your ads so that you not only get the most conversions, but also minimize the impact on your winning ad sets? In this video, I'll be going over step-by-step -step the exact strategy that you want to use when launching new creatives and also walk you through how to set it up in Ads Manager for yourself. Because there is a wrong way to do it and there's a right way to do it so that you maximize the number of conversions and your return on ad spend. This is the very same approach that I use with all the client accounts that I manage within my agency. And it's proven to work as we've spent thousands of dollars in testing. As a bonus, at the very end of this video, I'll also be revealing the foolproof process where I break down which audiences to test with so that you can get the best results. So let's not waste any more time and dive right in. So what is the best strategy for testing new ad creatives? There's lots of ways you can go about this, but after spending thousands of dollars and doing extensive testing, I think I figured it out. So you want to have variety in your approach, which means deploying different ad formats. That means you should be testing images, videos, carousels, GIFs, and collages. Now, let me explain why you should do this. It's actually pretty obvious when you think about it because different people respond differently to different ads. Some people may only respond well to images. You never know what circumstances are surrounding the person who came across your ad, right? Images are great for people who are constantly in a rush and don't spend a lot of time on Facebook and Instagram. Images get the message across very quickly so customers can make a snap decision on whether it's something that interests them without having to sit through a 15 second ad because that time is very valuable to them. Ain't nobody got time for that. Other people may respond better to videos. Generally speaking, videos are the most dynamic because you really get to show off your product or service in a number of ways and deliver a lot more information at once. These people want to learn as much as possible about your product or service. So they'll watch your 30 second, 60 second, or even two minute video to get as much information as they can. Now, me personally, I'm a carousel person if you've watched any of my previous videos. I like to flip through the slides and decide very quickly if I'm going to buy. I will admit part of the reason I do this is because I'm also doing research and getting inspiration from different brands so that I can replicate it in my own ads. Then you may also have people who are known to click on collages. So collages are essentially image ads that contain more than one image. An example would be a two by two grid with four different photos. So you might have people who prefer collages because it still delivers information rather quickly and offers a lot more information than a single image ad because it's basically multiple images combined into one. It doesn't require as much time as watching a video and they don't have to lift a finger to swipe through the images like you otherwise would with a carousel. I actually see collages being super effective and definitely a format that you want to test. And so what you need to understand here is that Facebook's algorithm knows exactly who responds to what types of ads. They sure as hell know that I prefer carousels, so I'm literally bombarded with carousels in my feed every time I open up Instagram. And sure enough, I swipe through almost all of them most of the time. They also know that, you know, Steven interacts with video ads, so they're going to show mostly video ads to him. You get the idea. That's why when you're testing creatives, it's important to have some variety and include at least one of each ad type because this maximizes your chances of converting different people. You're also able to scale better when you're running different formats within your ad sets. I'll go into more detail about this later in the video. Also, real quick before we go through how to set up your ads, I want to invite you to book a free strategy and discovery call with me. If you're an e-commerce brand and you've been running ads for a while and are looking to scale your ads to the next level or you're doing at least $20,000 in monthly sales from your store, my agency has a track record of getting incredible results for clients just like you. 
On our call, we'll review your ad account, I'll audit your account and give you my personal recommendations on how you can optimize your campaigns and give you tips on how you can improve your overall digital marketing funnel to drive more sales. We're looking to take on a select few online stores to work with and help you scale to your next sales target. So if this is something that you'd be interested in, click the link in the description box below to book a call with me because we would love to work with you. So the way I would go about structuring and creating this campaign is I would have one ad set and within that ad set I would have one image, one video, one carousel, and one collage. In total your ad set then has four different ads, one for each format. The reason you want to do this is because you want to test which format produces the best results. So let's say image collages perform the best for you. From there you can go a little deeper and begin to test other elements of your ad like your copy, your headline, and stuff like that. Or let's say videos perform the best for you and you typically see way better results from running video ads. In that case, you can double down on creating more video content. And what I like to do with video ads specifically is experiment with the first three seconds of the video because the first three seconds is the most critical in capturing someone's attention. If the first three seconds of your ad is not compelling, it doesn't matter how great the rest of your video is, you've already lost them and they've scrolled past your ad in their feeds. So I like to split test three variations of the intro. So let's take coffee, for example. I might do a version that highlights the taste and flavor profile of the coffee or I could test a version that speaks to the caffeine content and strength of the coffee. Or I could do another version featuring someone enjoying this coffee as part of their morning routine. So I would split test these three different versions to see which ad resonates better with my audience. Because you have to remember, people drink coffee for different reasons, right? I like my coffee super strong since I've completely obliterated my caffeine tolerance. Of course I've been up all night! Not because of caffeine, it was insomnia. I couldn't stop thinking about coffee. I need a nap. <laughs> coffee time! <laughs> so I need something extra potent to get me going. But Steven, who is a more casual drinker, prefers something more flavorful because he doesn't really like the bitter taste of coffee. So think about what aspects of your product are unique and experiment with those different characteristics in your ad. Now, when it comes to your ad copy, I like to use the same text for each creative. This is because you want to isolate the creative as the variable in your testing process while keeping the text independent. So let's say you were to use different text for each creative, that would make it more difficult to pinpoint whether you're text was the driving factor for the performance of your ads or the creative. Now I've spent a considerable amount of money testing how many text options and headlines generate the best results. So if you're wondering how many text options to use, here it is. You want to use two primary text options and two headlines. I've tried three, four, and up to five variations for each and without fail, two text options and two headlines outperforms every time. It simply doesn't work as well when you have more than two variations because what will happen is Facebook doesn't end up using all the five options you plug in and it isn't as efficient in creating those different combinations. Almost always the algorithm will favor two text options over the rest. So two primary text options, two headlines, that's what you want to use. The description is optional. You can put something like free shipping and returns there, but most of the time I leave that blank. So now you have four ads each with two ad copy variations. With this setup, you have the best probability and highest chance of reaching different people according to their behaviors based on the types of ads that get them to take the action that you're looking for. To recap, test new creatives with multiple ad formats within an ad set because it allows Facebook to optimize which ads are delivered to which people. What's more, it also extends the life of your ad set so you don't experience ad fatigue as quickly since you have multiple ad formats running at the same time. That way you don't have to go in and refresh your ads as often because Facebook already has various formats and ads to cycle through. So then you would allow this to run for a minimum of three to four days or even up to seven days. 
I prefer to use a longer window now when assessing the results, especially with the iOS 14 update, there will be a delay in when you actually see the conversions being attributed to your campaigns in your reporting. So let's assume that seven days have passed and your video and carousel ads have significantly outperformed your other ads. Then I would go ahead and turn off the image and collage ad and allow Facebook to focus on delivering the ads that have proven to convert. Now, you might be thinking, which audiences should you use with this creative strategy? Pro tip, I like to start with warm audiences when testing new creatives. These will be your value-based lookalike audiences, such as 2% purchase lookalike, a 2% lookalike using your customer list, and things like that. If you want to know which are the most valuable audiences you should be using, I did an in-depth video on that that also covers many audiences that a lot of brands and advertisers don't even know about. So you can go ahead and check that out if you haven't already. That video will also be linked in the description box below. So the reason you wanna start with high value audiences when testing new creatives is because if your hottest audiences are responding well to your new ads, then it's safe to assume that those same ads will also produce strong results with a colder market. Plus, you'll also acquire likes, comments, and engagement more quickly, so you can then use that existing ad with all that social proof and duplicate it into a broader audience for the best results. I mean, we live in an age of FOMO where we're psychologically influenced to like a pair of shoes if we see that hundreds of other people like them too. Thus, with enough social proof, that particular ad will have a dramatically higher conversion rate, which in turn will cause more customers to want those shoes since they're perceived as popular. So there you have it, the proper way to set up any new ad creatives that you want to test. If you try this strategy out, I would love to hear in the comment section below how it works out for you. Don't forget that if you would like to book a discovery call with me, just click the link in the description box below. As always, if you learned something or got value from this video, smash that thumbs up button, subscribe, and comment down below any questions that you might have. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.